Brothers and sisters, Merry Christmas. I hope something of the radiance of this mystery of these days. Uh, for the next eight days, we're going to celebrate one long Christmas day in the liturgy. It's going to be just as if it was one day. Uh, the, the liturgy invites us to prolong and intensify the grace of this time and to really let it sink into our hearts. You know, when we think of the whole nativity scene, I preached on this last year as well. I probably will say it again every year because we need to be reminded that we can construct cozy crashes and, or as you say in Ireland, cribs um, of, of the scene of the nativity scene of Jesus and Mary and Joseph and the shepherds, etc. Wise men, animals, you name it. And in it, you know, we could get this cozy, sanitary, very homey feeling. But it was a night that was full of awe and wonder. But in the midst of it, there was suffering. You know, it was already the cross was already there present. You know, the suffering love that, that, that makes love even true. You know, the sacrificial love of Mary and Joseph um, to, to have accepted this invitation from God from the beginning. And already the, his life begins with this great inconvenience that they can't find any room in the end. And they, they come by a decree of Caesar Augustus, who is, who's in his palace at the Tiber in Rome. And he, you know, he decrees the, this, this decree to go across the whole imperial Roman Empire. And it just shows us, you know, as Luke's gospel says, you know, his decree went out. And, uh, and this is why to call a census, the whole world, the whole known world that, that the Roman Empire was really touching all of civilization in one sense. And to all these people to be decreed and Mary and Joseph, God will use this decree, this secular work, but through the events of even of ordinary life, God is working on that to fulfill his plan to bring them to Bethlehem. Because 500 years before that in Bethlehem, we have the great prophet Micah. And he says to you, oh, you um, Bethlehem of Ephrata, you know, least of the princes of Judah, from you will come. You know, this, this, the, the great Messiah, the great shepherd to, for his people. And this prophecy is true. You know, it comes true. There's so many prophecies and they all come true. And so we have this amazing scene. But they, they, so they, they travel in there. They, my own Aunt Leslie and I were talking about it on Christmas Eve. Like, what were Mary and Joseph doing right now? Well, they were walking. They're exhausted, as she was pointing out. They're tired and they, they, the inconvenience, you know. They, you know, what did Mary and Joseph think about what? Did they know that Jesus had to be born in Bethlehem? Maybe they knew the prophecy as well. Or maybe they were a bit anxious that Mary's nearly there at giving birth. And and uh, and yet, but they have to trust the Lord. And they would have trusted the Lord. And they set out. And they um, and they, they followed the, this, this civil decree. Um, but God used it to bring them to Bethlehem. And there, the Lord is born um, in, in the most amazing way. But he's born in this suffering love, even... Already the creator didn't even find a home in his creation in one sense because it wasn't accepted into the end. So already there, there is the revelation of God in this incredible way that is happening. That God is showing us his incredible love in, in the humility that him who created the stars, that little baby is God. And he's even holding all the stars in existence and, and all the heavens and, and Mary and Joseph and the whole scene. It's wild. It's mad. And, and yet he, he um, has chosen, God has chosen to accept this humble thing, to enter into mess, to be born into a messy situation. And, and to, so that joy could be born in mess, so that joy and peace could be born and had in the midst of, 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 of a cold, dark, uncomfortable cave, which is a symbol of, of, of our sin. And you could say of, of the mess and the tragedies of life, that in the midst of that, Mary and Joseph adore. And in that adoration, they, 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 their hearts are open to, to this incredible joy. And often the field nearby, the angels are breaking forth from the supernatural realm and breaking forth into, into time in, in this exquisite way. And these shepherds uh, uh, get this, this call and this summon. And when they go, they find exactly what the angels told them. So they heard the word of God through the angels and the word of God led them to Jesus. The same way that the word of God leads us all the time to Christ um, in, his, in, in his word, but in his Eucharistic heart. And something, right, something of that light and that humility of God continues even further in the Eucharist. St. Peter Julian Amar, many Eucharistic saints have pointed this out. The, the Bethlehem continues in the host in the sense that 
that Christ went further than just a human to 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 become present and 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 become totally um, present by trans by changing the substance of bread and wine into himself that he is in his Eucharistic but he's so fragile as a Eucharist and needs protection but there you know there's something in Bethlehem this mystery continues that he's made himself even more small so that we will not be afraid to come to him and one of the great I'll end on this one of the great mysteries of Christmas is light has entered the world you see this in all the mass prayers the light has entered the world Jesus has come to bring light to our minds to enlighten us if we would let him he can raise our minds above ordinary pitch of existence to think with God and to to have the transform I want to read to you the great a great quote by St. Francisco, one of the visionaries in Fatima, and he says, I love seeing the angel, but still more seeing Our Lady. What I love most of all was to see Our Lord in that light from Our Lady that penetrated our hearts. We were on fire in that light, which is God. We were not burnt. 